Bricklink Studio recently released a new rotate tool for their LEGO design software. Let's see how it works and what's changed. To activate my selection options, I simply select a piece. Selected parts will have these rotation arrows on each axis. So we have the x-axis in green, the y-axis in blue, and the z-axis in red. All I need to do to rotate these pieces is click on the arrows, and it will rotate the pieces as needed. Each click is 90 degrees. This is the same behavior I see if I use my keyboard shortcuts, for example, the up or down arrows. When I start using those keyboard shortcuts, my click options vanish to make it easier to see. However, I don't have all three axes available by default with the keyboard. For more precise controls, I can click and drag on those arrows. Doing so brings up my rotation wheel where I can see the angle of my rotation and spin my piece around that axis to my heart's content. If my mouse stays inside of the circle, it will lock to a five degree increment. Outside of the circle, I have complete freedom with that rotation. And inside the innermost circle, it will lock in 90 degree increments. This makes it really easy to get an exact 30 degree or 60 degree measurement on that axis. If I know the exact angle that I want the piece rotated, I can also click on the center circle between the arrows. Doing so will pull up the same wheel, but now I can click the number and type it in directly. Once a piece is rotated, selecting it will show those same axis values in their new rotated positions. If instead I want to refer to the global axes of my model, I can click the yellow cube in the middle. And that will return my rotation tools to their original positions and lets me rotate my piece in relation to the model instead of in relation to itself. So those are the basics. But what if things get a little more complicated? Many parts are designed to hinge and move together, including hinge pieces or turntables or similar. When we select a hinge part, we see our rotation option only for where that hinge exists. Just like before, we can click for 90 degrees or click and drag for something more granular. This doesn't only work with dedicated hinge pieces, but any piece that function as a hinge. For example, a clip and a bar. We will see the same behavior with any connected piece. These two bricks are connected by one stud, and it can rotate on that stud to any angle I need. However, if a piece is connected to more than one stud, and when the piece is selected, nothing appears. Some of the parts in the catalog come as pre-built assemblies. For example, the hinge plates or the hinge bricks. Now, when I select one of those pieces, I see the same rotation options, but they apply to the entire assembly and not to just the hinged part. For pre-built assemblies, there is a hinge options button in the top right corner. When I select that, I essentially enter the submodel of that assembly and can adjust each part as needed. Simply double click outside or click return to main model to go back. The problem with that is that if I attach something to that piece and then try to rotate the hinge, it doesn't care about my attachments or other possible conflicts which means that this assembly is hard to work with if there are other pieces. Instead, clicking on the assembly gives us the option to release it into its component parts. And now I can select each individual piece and rotate them as normal. All of these same techniques will apply to a traditional model and not just individual parts. For example, if I select this windscreen, 
it is hinged on this clip and bar assembly, and I can simply click on those arrows to open or shut my assembly. The same is true of this submodel. I can click on that and click and drag to adjust the angle to exactly where I want it to go. When a part you select is connected to multiple places where it could hinge, instead of seeing arrows by default, I see a hinge option, and I'll need to select which one of those I want to rotate by. Once my hinge point is selected, I can use the same options as before. Note that when I move that piece, all of the attached pieces move with it. So it's not just my clip, but instead the slope and tile. Of course, if I select parts that aren't rotatable, I don't get any rotate arrows. So overall, I like these changes. I think that it's great that everything is one click closer. I like that it's consistent and easy to use, and I really like that I can control the rotation in all three dimensions without having to pivot my model in the viewfinder. I do think that I might get annoyed with those colorful things popping up all the time anytime I have a piece selected. Um, we'll see. And um, I'm going to miss having a keyboard shortcut to pull up that rotation feature. But overall, I think it's going to be a step in the right direction, and I'm excited to build more and see how it goes. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Mm -hmm.